Yeah. Material things mean a great deal to you? Oh, absolutely. I know people, people say, oh, well, you shouldn't worry about material things. I grew up as an only child, uh, and I didn't want to be an only child. I was desperate to have a brother or sister, but that's the way it went. Um, so I was quite, I, I spent quite a sort of sheltered life as a kid, he said, sobbing. Uh, so I, I collected, you know, the things I collected uh, meant a great deal to me. And I, I have this feeling that in, inanimate objects have feelings too. Only because I've uh, been brought up, to, as I say, as a pretty lonely kid as a child. Um, but material things so do matter to me. substitute things for those brothers and sisters, don't you? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. I don't know, it's, people say, well, there he goes again, all material things. But it was important to me as a kid. You're a school musician, aren't you? I wasn't when I started. I, I played by ear. Um, and then my parents forced me to have lessons when I was about seven, much to my disgust. But I started to enjoy it, and I won a scholarship to the Royal Academy of Music. Uh, so I went, every, I went to school from Monday to Friday, and on Saturday I had to go to the Royal Academy of Music, which didn't amuse me, because the end of Saturday was one of my only days off where I could play football or whatever. But I enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed the choir practice and things like that. And I, I, I was always a great sort of just about made it sort of person. I just got through my exams at school and I just got through my music exams. But I used to be, I used to be able to sight read very well and et cetera, et cetera, but that's all gone. Um, but I know, it gave me enough knowledge of music to know chord structures and gave me a very good ear for all things. Was piano always your instrument from the very beginning? Yeah, I wish I could play something else. I've tried playing the guitar, but I have the smallest hands next, uh, to, uh, next to Jack Nicholas. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I can't, I can't get to uh, sort of get to grips with it. Uh, I can play four chords on the guitar. Well, it doesn't. You know, you can have the, the neck of the guitar made for you. Yeah, but unless I've played done something in ten minutes, I, mean, I get fed up with it. <laughs> but you know, it's so interesting to talk to some musicians, some great ones too, who are just perfect at what they do and and many times you find out they started out on another instrument and then d discovered that they could ex express themselves better on that instrument and that's the one they stayed with now I, the only reason i'd like to play something else is because when you're writing a song on a piano you get hit there's only you can only go so far and then if you write a song on an electric piano for some reason you write a different sort of song because it's a mellower sounding instrument and you write different chord structures and you write in different keys um, to what you would on an ordinary piano and so if I wrote, if I could play the guitar well I know I could write different songs on the guitar it's very frustrating there aren't many instruments you can write on I think you're fairly limited I can't see myself picking up um, an oboe and writing on that um, <laughs> so I would like to play guitar but I'll have to my second instrument really is the electric piano because it, it really is a uh, totally different to the uh, to the acoustic piano in the respects that it, it, I don't know something happens when you play an electric piano that's different from, a, from an ordinary piano We'll be right back with Elton John. Well, it is lonely, really. Um, so few of us there. Uh, <laughs> well, I can't really explain it. Uh, what did you mean when it's you my own, Well, you see, I'm a, I'm a loner. I've discovered, I've just really, in the last year or so, discovered that I don't think um, I could possibly live with anyone anymore. Um, I'm so selfish uh, and, and self-centered to the point where not nastily, I don't think, but you know, if I live with somebody, and I have lived with people, and I get really picky about the way they wash the cups up and things like that, I'm, I'm pretty intolerant of things like that. And I, I've sort of, for the moment, accepted that um, I'm a loner. I don't mind. I'm, I'm beginning to enjoy it. There was a period for two or three years where it made me really miserable. But I, I think I've come to grips with it. And uh, if that's the way it is, then that's the way it is. Isn't it funny? I would never have thought that you were a loner. No, I mean, I've got loads of friends. Oh, I, I mean, know as that. far as my own uh, personal life uh, goes, then I'm a loner. What do you do when you close the door and you're there all by yourself? Um, go to bed. No, I, Are you I, a reader? I'm, I'm a, yeah, I'm a ter terrific reader. Um, I collect records like it's going out of fashion. I catalog things. I'm a maniac cataloger. Um, I dust. I hoover. I, you know, nothing's, <laughs> oh, nothing's baby, better please. to me than a tin of pledge and a dirty table, and, and that's fine. Um, no, I, I'm very house proud. I enjoy my house. I enjoy my pets. Um, I have an enormous house in England that's currently being destroyed because Why? I, uh, well, I decided that I can't live the way it was. It was a beautiful house, 17th, 16th century sort oh. of roots, but the people that moved in were very sort of... Like, how can I explain it? They were the sort of people that would um, tear out genuine leather things and put in nogger hide. Oh, so they, wow. they ripped all the chimney stacks off and, and really ruined the basic history of the house, and I'm trying to put it back together again. You know, 
you have such a tremendous influence uh, on young people all over the world. Do you feel a special kind of responsibility because of your reputation? Yeah, I do have a responsibility to sort of to those kids and to people who are followers and fans. Um, and I, but it's been much. Uh, my responsibility has been nailed down to me even further by being the chairman of a soccer club, because you have to become a good loser. You have to treat. You have to become a harder person. You have to say yes and no, which I was very bad at saying. Um, and you, you. I think it's all a matter of experience and growing up a bit. Uh, but I do have a responsibility. I, I should behave well, and I should treat anybody who comes up to me with the greatest respect if they if they got you know good manners. Nothing annoys me more than people that come up and, and are rude. But what's the point of arguing? You know? I sort of get the feeling when you said moments ago that I've decided to back away for about a year, that this is not the happiest time of your life. No, I'm having it. This is beginning to be one of the happiest is times it? of my life. Yeah. But a guy with that kind of a schedule and living under the pressures you live under, just suddenly get up one morning and have the luxury of saying, hey, I've got nothing to do today. What no, is that but, like? Well, I, you see, I haven't backed, I've backed off from a year from entertaining, but I've been so involved with record producing for other people and for who? the soccer club. Who do you produce for? Uh, Kiki uh, and two groups, Blue and China, who um, I have a record label as well. I know. So you. I devoted my time, I, I spent a year in the studio producing other people. Uh, with, I have a partner called Clive Banks who helps me out because I couldn't do it on my own. And also with the soccer club, it, it really takes a lot of time, the soccer thing, you know. I've had to hire a new coach, I've had to fire an old coach, I've, we've had to sort of um, make, make out detailed plans of what we're going to do. We have a five-year program ahead of us, and we've laid out detailed you know, things of what's going to happen. Mm. I, I've worked very hard, um, but I haven't worked very hard on my own career because I thought it was time to stop. But I, I've been very busy, and I've enjoyed being busy because I've been helping other people, really. Did you know Elvis? Uh, I met Elvis for two minutes um, uh, when I played Washington in 1976. That uh, was the only time I've met him. What was your impression of him in those two minutes? I thought he looked extremely ill, and I felt very sorry for him then. I thought, my God, I hope I don't, and I don't mean this insulting me, I hope this never happens to me. What do you think really happened to him? Do you think he was into drugs or what? Do you believe what you read about the, the autopsy? I, I, no? the heart? I don't think I can believe anything that I read because I don't know what is the truth. I, I'm not really in a position to judge what happened to him. Um, I just think it's tragic what, what did happen to him because I still think he was a, a tremendous talent. He had the best voice. And it's obviously surrounded by the wrong people, I would put it down to. Having seen people in other similar situations sort of go the same way, um, I would say it's all down to the people around you and the way they lead you and the way they pick off you and the way they, they suck the energy out of you and tell you you're wonderful and everything. And they, yeah. just, they just the take the everything creative out of you, all the um, energy out of you and they s eventually you just do nothing. And I, that's, that's terribly sad. But I would probably blame it on the people surrounding you. Do you have that kind of an entourage around you? I have had, you in the past? Oh yeah, I've had bodyguards and things like that on tour and I got a little fed up with it because, you know, um, it was very hard to reach me. You had to go sort of via oh, so many people to get a phone call to me and this has happened to you some of my friends. You don't have to friends. tell me, Elton. I know. No, I know. <laughs> uh, I, how'd, you, how'd you end that? You can't, really. It always happens. I mean, it's, it'll always happen. I've created the monster that it is me, pardon the expression, um, and I have to live with it and deal with it, and I don't feel guilty about it. Um, but trying to ease the situation like um, the people around you. I've, I've got good people around me. I know that I, I've never been ripped off um, in the way that most pop stars have been ripped off. Everyone gets ripped off at some point in their life. Sharpies, business yeah, managers, but I'm probably people one with of the few people. I mean, I shudder at some of the, the people, and I won't name names, that are making a great deal of money now. Uh, and I think, oh well, let's see how much you end up with it. I've paid all my taxes. I'm fully paid up, and I've still got enough money to live in England where the taxation rate is pretty high. Mm. Um, most people in this business, unfortunately, the, the record industry business, if I can sort of go from the point of things, has been taken over by hideous people like lawyers and accountants. They are the people that are running this business at the moment, and they are making all the wrong moves for their artists, they are making all the right moves for themselves. Because um, there's no creativity there. Well, they've right? ruined, I mean, we've had artists on our label that have been, our relationship with them has been ruined by pushy solicitors and accountants. And quite honestly, like, the uh, record industry at the moment is grotesque. Gosh, it's, uh, and that's, uh, uh, and it, can you be more direct? 
<laughs> well, I think... Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, <laughs> I could be more... I could name names, but I'm not going to. But, um, I agree, I agree with it's you. It's disgusting and, uh, what's happening. I know the motion business. picture business has been taken over by accountants and bankers, yeah. people who have, do, do not know no. uh, uh, Anything creativity. Anything about music That's right. anything, and That's they right. have taken over, and they're hideous. And, and suddenly they're in there saying, well, we got to think of the box office, and that name means more than, you know, and it's yeah. senseless. I must ask you about this, because a while back you admitted to being bisexual. Yeah. What ramifications came from that? I mean, what, what came from that? What came from it? I mean, well, I find that when I was driving around London, I got far more waves from taxi drivers and lorry drivers than I'd ever had before. <laughs> um, so, um, I had another, you know, you, I, Why I go, should you be so open? Why should you? Why should Elton John? Well, I think most people in the industry knew it anyway, so, but I mean... What, what brought that about, though? Why should you tell well, them? Well, nobody ever public? asked me before, really. And this guy from Rolling Stone, Cliff Jar, and he was very nice, and just came out and, uh, and asked, asked oh, a question. How did he ask you? Well, he said, he was very nice, he said, I'm gonna, if you want me to, after you've answered this question, I shall erase the tape, and you've got complete control, which is very nice. And he just said, are you bisexual? I said, well, yes. Weren't you afraid it would damage your, your, your position in popular music to say something like that? Has I think, it I think if you've got um, your own interests uh, at heart too much like that, if you, you know, don't think, well, uh, my career, my career, my career, what's going to happen, then I think you should get out of the business anyway, because you get so obsessed with yourself. No, I, it was a perfectly honest, honest answer to an honest question. I'm glad I said it. Um, You've got your act together. Well, and I, wanna... I mean, it, well, it's so, you know, big deal. Well, and I want to thank you for your candor and thank you for allowing us this time. My pleasure. I enjoyed meeting you. Elton John, we'll be right back. Elton